good morning students this is arvin so assistant professor dvsit kavali so in the previous class i discussed about uh, some numerical problems on uh, dc machines and now i am going to discuss testing of dc machine so uh, in this class i am going to discuss different uh, tests or various tests on dc machines okay i will discuss one by one so firstly i will discuss two methods okay here these are the various tests on dc machines those are first one is brake test second one is swimmans test and third one is hopkinson's test and fourth one is field test and fifth one is retardation test these are the five tests we are going to conduct on a dc machine okay so to determine the to predetermine the efficiency and losses of the dc machine okay so firstly we will discuss um brake test or direct load test okay so here this is the another method of testing the dc motor is brake test method so actually we have different methods but here we are using brake test okay this is a direct method of testing the motor so this is the one test uh, which is used to test the motor by directly by connecting the load directly okay so in this method the motor is put on the direct load by means of a belt and pulley arrangement so here we are using belt and pulley arrangement uh, because if we want to put the weight on the machine we have to use the belt and pulley arrangement so by adjusting the tension of belt so here we have one tension of belt so it is used to the load is adjusted to give the various values of current so by using the uh, tension of belt we are going to adjust the load to give various values of currents okay so the load is finally adjusted to get full load current so here we have to vary the load up to we get the full load current okay that means here the current value is changes while applying the load on the machine so here the power developed gets wasted against the friction between belt and shaft okay the power developed gets wasted against the friction between belt and shaft so that is known as friction loss you already know this one in the losses of dc machines concept so due to breaking action of belt the test is called brake test okay due to breaking action of belt is uh, the test is called brake test okay and next so here i am showing a diagram so it consists of a and b arrangement so here in the a diagram we will have the experimental setup to conduct the brake test on a dc machine and next on the right side we have b diagram so it consists of belt and pulley arrangement so by using this belt and pulley arrangement we have to give the weight we have to put the weight on the machine so here we have the tension so this is the handle and uh, here uh, w1 is indicating here so this w1 that is the weight so it is connected to the earth okay so the figure a shows the experimental setup for performing brake test on dc shunt motor so here i am using shunt motor dc shunt motor so and the figure b shows the belt and pulley arrangement mounted on the shaft of the motor these are the two arrangements so here i am taking a dc supply it consists of the polarities plus and minus and next we are using one ammeter so this ammeter is used to calculate the current and next here also we are using one ammeter so this is used to calculate the shunt field current so which is connected across the uh, series with the shunt resistance and here we are using one motor this is shunt motor so uh, the voltmeter is connected across the motor okay and next we have this one this is a switch okay ppst switch we have so it shows that uh, it varies like this so here we are using belt and pulley arrangement so this one is handle and this one is spring balance and this one is belt so if you see this diagram you will understand so this is the belt which is connected to the weights and here we are using one uh, indicator okay this indicator gives the how much weight we are putting into the machine okay so this is the diagrammatic representation to conduct the brake test on a dc shunt motor and next this test performed with the small motors only so actually this type of uh, test is performed only with 
small motors only it is a direct method to determine the efficiency this is the only method we have oh, to determine the efficiency directly okay so the motor is loaded directly by applying brake to a water cooled pulley mounted on the motor shaft as shown in the figure so if you see the diagram that is b diagram so here we have the arrangement of belt and pulley arrangement so in that one we have to load directly by applying brakes that means the step by step we are using so firstly we will uh, apply one load and we will uh, see the rating of that uh, weight uh, we, by using the spring balances if the spring is balanced means we have to note down the weight and after that we have to note down the current values okay so one end of the belt is fixed so actually one end of the belt is fixed that is on the left side of uh, b diagram that one is fixed to earth okay through spring balance and the other is connected to a suspended weight w1 okay suspended weight w1 so if you see the diagram you will understand so this one so this is so this one is a uh, w2 is a uh, fixed and w1 is uh, vary okay and the difference of weight w1 and spring balance reading w2 so that is the difference of weight w1 and spring balance reading w2 gives the effective force on the pulley effective force on the pulley and when the motor starts running the load on the motor is adjusted till it carries full load current so i already said this point when the motor starts running the load on the motor is adjusted till it carries the full load current this is the final condition we have to obtain okay so after that the tension in the belt can be adjusted using the handle so in the b diagram we have one handle on the top of the arrangement so by using that handle we have to adjust the uh, tension of the belt and next the tension in kg can be obtained from the spring balance readings so on the right side we have on the b i am discussing about the b diagram not a diagram so in the b diagram we have the total arrangement uh, to apply the load so it consists of one belt and a spring balance one handle and these are all uh, mounted on the shaft of the motor so here the tension in kgs can be obtained from the spring balance readings that is w2 w1 is the applying load w2 is the spring balance the difference between these two we will get okay here to calculate the <coughs> efficiency and uh, efficiency and uh, some more losses uh, we are uh, we have to take the some parameters here let r so that is the radius of pulley in meters okay if you observe the b diagram we have a circle so in that circle we have r letter it consists of an indicator so that is the radius of pulley in meters and n is the speed in rpm and w1 is the spring balance reading on the tight side in the kg w1 that means on the right side of the b diagram we have left side of the uh, we have w1 that is a spring balance reading on tight side in kg and next w2 that is a spring balance reading on slack side in kg tight side and slack side tight side means we have to apply the load and uh, slack side means it is normal okay and next the net pull on the belt due to friction at the pulley is the difference between the two spring balance readings so net pull on the belt due to friction at the pulley is the difference between the two spring balance that is w1 minus w2 so here i am taking net pull that is w1 minus w2 so that is equal to so it is in kgs and next we have to take in newtons that is 9.81 into w1 minus w2 newtons okay and next as radius capital r and speed n are known the shaft torque developed can be obtained as tau sh is equal to net pull into radius r so the here the net pull is the 9.81 into w1 minus w2 and radius is r newton meter this is the shaft torque developed in the dc shunt motor while applying the uh, brake test so uh, shaft torque is equal to 9.81 into w1 minus w2 into r newton meter hence the output power can be obtained as p out is equal to tau sh into omega so here omega is the angular uh, speed so that is equal to we have the shaft torque that is 9.81 into w1 minus w2 into 
r into omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 you already know this formula omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 watts this is the output power so here it is a shunt motor means the output power is the electrical energy okay so now let v is equal to voltage applied in volts and i is total line current drawn in amperes okay as we know v and i are input parameters of dc motors in brake test then we have to calculate the input power that is p input is equal to v into i why because here v and i is the parameters of dc current input parameters of dc motors in brake test that's why i am taking the input power the product of voltage and current and we have the output and input then why let go and find the efficiency of dc shunt motor so if you know the output and input why because the efficiency formula is the ratio of output power by input power so um, up to now we calculated output power and input power so substitute those two formulas into this this formula we will get the efficiency so we have output and input then we have to calculate the efficiency that is efficiency eta is equal to output by input there is no units for the efficiency okay efficiency can be given as eta is equal to percentage of eta is equal to p out by p in into 100 here p out is the output power and p in is the input power so here i am taking in the percentages that's why here i am taking into 100 so by adjusting the load step by step till full load number of readings can be obtained okay actually we have this experiment in the electrical machine slab so if you conduct if you practice this uh, experiment you will understand um, easily so this is only in the theoretical i discussed uh, these things in the theoretical manner but if you do experiments practically so you will understand uh, you will better understand this one okay next so we will discuss uh, advantages of brake test and disadvantages of brake test so any test will contain advantages and uh, disadvantages and firstly we will discuss advantages of brake test so actually in the brake test the actual efficiency of the motor under working conditions can be found out under working conditions note this one under working conditions the motor efficiency can be calculated so brake test is simple and easy to perform why because here I, we are applying the direct load to the motor that's why we have to use this brake test as simple as possible and easy to perform and it is not only for dc shunt motor also can be performed on any type of dc motor so actually in this one i am taking only dc shunt motor but uh, this is not applicable this is not only applicable to the dc shunt motor it will be applicable to the any type of dc motor brake test okay and next coming to the disadvantages of brake test so in brake test due to the belt friction lot of heat will be generated so if you do the experiment of this one you will understand this point so actually if you apply the uh, load onto the belt so it uh, uh, when it running it will generate lots of heat so to cool down that one we have to put the water into the roller that means in the belt side okay to get the accurate result okay so in brake test due to belt friction lot of heat will be generated and hence there is large dissipation of energy okay next cooling arrangement is necessary to minimize the heat so mostly in our laboratories we use water as cooling liquid so already i discussed this one previously water as a cooling liquid we are using so while pouring the water into this that one it will uh, cool down the uh, friction okay heat and next convenient only for small rated machines i already discussed this one also so this test is only performed for small machines so convenient only for small rated machines due to limitations regarding heat dissipation arrangements okay and fourth one is the power developer gets wasted hence brake test method is little expensive so in this method we wasted uh, more power that's why this method is little expensive okay so this is the explanation for the brake test or direct load test on dc motors uh, especially for the dc shunt motor okay and next coming to the second test for a dc machine to calculate the efficiency so here in this test the efficiency of the machine at any load is predetermined okay in this test the efficiency of the machine 
at any load is predetermined so we can run the machine as a motor or as a generator so previously in the brake test we are used only the test for the dc motors but here this famous test are no load this is also called no load test so actually previous case we are using the brake test that is a direct load test but here we are not using any load we are not applying any load so we can run the machine as a motor or as a generator so in this method of testing no load losses are measured separately so in this method of testing no load losses so we, here we are not applying any load but but we have some losses so here the losses are measured separately and eventually we can determine the efficiency this is the diagrammatic representation to conduct the swimbus test on a dc machine so here we are using a dc supply through a dpst switch dipole single throw switch and here we are using one ammeter so it is used to calculate the no load current and next we have oh, ammeter 2 so this is connected to the field winding so by using this ammeter we have to calculate the shunt field current by varying the rheo start are variable okay and next we have one more thing that is uh, here also we are using one variable so it is connected uh, across the voltmeter and motor so by using this voltmeter we have to calculate the current uh, voltage value and next we have to calculate the no load armature current value also by using this one okay this i a not this no load armature current is flowing in the motor okay this is the diagrammatic representation for the swimmer's test and next so the machine is run as a motor on no load and the field is adjusted to give the rated speed okay here i am taking the machine is run as a motor not a generator so on no load that to on no load and the field is adjusted to give rated speed okay here we are using one field that is adjusted it will give the rated speed so when the rated voltage is applied across the motor terminal so if they give the rated speed means we have to apply the rated uh, voltage that means 220 or 230 or 240 volts this is the rated voltage and during no load condition mechanical output of the machine is zero so during no load condition mechanical output of the machine is zero okay next so whole of the input on no load is used to supply the internal losses in the machine so whole of the input on no load is used to supply the internal losses in the machine so at no load input power to armature supplies the following losses so here we are not applying any load but we have the no load losses so here at no load input power to armature supplies the following losses those are iron losses in the core friction losses uh, and windage losses and armature copper losses these are all occurred at no load okay next here the no load input current is measured by ammeter a1 so i already discussed this point in the diagrammatic representation also i discussed this one so the no load input current that is i naught is measured by ammeter a1 and next the field current ish is measured with the help of ammeter a2 this point as i discussed on the diagrammatic representation and next the no load armature current is given by ia naught so here if you want to calculate the no load armature current that is ia naught the difference between the no load input power and field current that is i naught minus ish because it is a motor okay next the supply voltage v is measured with the help of voltmeter so we have one voltmeter that is used to calculate the supply voltage and here the no load input power that is a p naught is equal to v into i naught and shunt field losses that is v into ish so the uh, losses means the power wastage so here the shunt field losses is equal to v into ish next no load armature copper losses is equal to i a naught square i a naught square r a that is equal to so here i a naught is equal to i naught minus ish whole square into r a so where r a is the armature resistance in ohms so this is a no load armature copper losses i a naught square r a because here we are not using any load that's why i am taking no load armature current that is i a naught square into r a so you already know i a naught is equal to the difference between i naught minus i s h okay so substitute here we have i naught minus i s h whole square into r a next constant loss so here we have to calculate the constant loss by using the no load input power that is p naught minus no load armature copper loss that is 
PCU naught. Okay, that is the no load armature copper loss. So here uh, constant loss is represented with the P suffix C. That is P suffix C is equal to no load input power. We already know this one. That is V into I naught minus no load armature copper loss. That is this is also you know that is I A naught square R A. So here P C is equal to V I naught minus. So you know I A naught is equal to I naught minus I S H. Substitute here. So V I naught minus I naught minus I S H all square into R A. So by knowing the value of constant losses of the motor, its efficiency at any other load can be predetermined. Okay. So if we want to determine the efficiency of machine running as a motor, so we have to take some parameters. That is, let the load current is I L amperes and input power that is P in is equal to V into I L watts. Constant losses P C is equal to V into I naught minus I naught minus I S H all square into R A. You already obtained this one in the uh, above. Okay, constant losses P C is equal to V I naught minus I naught minus I S H all square into R A. And armature copper loss that is I L minus I S H all square into R A. And coming to to calculate the total losses, that is P suffix T is equal to. This is the combination of constant losses plus copper losses. So here. Constant losses is V I naught minus I naught minus I S H all square into R A plus copper losses is I L minus I S H all square into R A. And uh, by using these things, we have to calculate the output power. You know the formula to calculate the output power. That is output power is equal to input power minus total losses. So here the input power is V into I L minus total losses is uh, I L minus I S H all square into R A minus P C. That is the constant losses. So I L minus I S H whole square into R E means that is the copper losses, and uh, we have the co constant losses that is minus P C. So by using this one, we have to calculate the efficiency. That is the uh, percentage efficiency is equal to output power by input power into 100. You know this formula. So here output power is V I L minus P T. That is the total power total losses V into I L minus total losses by input power that is V into I L into 100. Okay, this is the efficiency calculation for the Simmons test for DC motors, and uh, coming to the efficiency of machine running as a generator. So here also we have to calculate the efficiency of the machine. So here we have to take some parameters. That is the load current that is equal to I L amperes, and terminal voltage is V. Output power is P naught that is equal to V into I L, and armature copper loss is that is equal to I A square R A. Here I am taking output power, but for a motor we have to take the input power. Okay, in the motor the output power is the electrical energy, and in the generator mechanical energy. But in the generator we have the uh, input power as input uh, mechanical power. That's why here we know already output power P naught is equal to V into I L watts, and armature copper losses is equal to I A square R A, and copper losses is equal to so oh, so for a generator. The armature current is the combination of uh, load current and shunt field current. That is I L plus I S H all square into R A. And coming to the constant losses, so these are all constant for uh, both for generator and uh, motor. So constant losses P C is equal to V I naught minus I naught minus I S H all square into R A. By using this uh, output power and uh, constant losses, sorry copper losses and constant losses, we have to calculate the total losses. That is. Um, constant losses plus copper losses that is equal to V I naught minus I naught minus I S H all square into R A plus I L plus I S H all square into R A. Okay. Next, here the input power we have to calculate the input power for a motor we have to calculate the output power. So here the input power is equal to output power plus total losses. And in the previous case we discussed the output power that is output power is equal to input power minus total losses. But for a generator we have to calculate the input power. So that is equal to output power plus total losses. So input power is indicated with the P in is equal to output power is P naught plus total losses is P T. So P in is equal to P naught. We have to we know already this one output power P naught is equal to V into I L minus total losses P T. And therefore the efficiency of the motor in the generator in the percentages that is equal to eta is equal to output power by input power into 100. Mm, therefore efficiency is equal to output power is V into I L by Uh, input power is V into I L plus P T. Okay, so this is the Simmons test. Okay, here uh, I one mistake is that P N is equal to V I L plus P T. So uh, 
So the in the efficiency, I read in the correct one that is V into IL plus PT into 100. Okay. So coming to the advantages and disadvantages of Swimman's test. So first advantage is this test is very convenient and economical as it is required very less power from supply to perform the test. Next, since constant losses are known, efficiency of Swimman's test can be predetermined at any load. And next, coming to the disadvantages. Iron loss is neglected through there is change in iron loss from no load to full load due to armature reaction. And we cannot be sure about the satisfactory commutation on loaded condition because the test is done on no load. So here we are not using any load. That's why we don't have any commutation effects like this. So we cannot measure the temperature rise when the machine is loaded. Why? Because here I am not using any load. So if you use any load, uh, the machine is gets heated while applying the load. So we can't measure the temperature rise when the machine is loaded. Okay, that's why here the power losses can vary with the temperature. Okay, there is no power loss uh, in the low. Some losses is there, but uh, there is no huge power loss in this one. So in DC series motors, the Swimmer's test cannot be done to find its efficiency as it is a no load test. Okay. So it is not applicable to the DC series motors. Okay. So that's it. In the next class, I am going to discuss uh, remaining tests. Okay. Thank you.